Okay, let's get into Article 230 services. There's going to be three videos that cover changes to Article 230. And actually, none of them are new sections. These all three were added in the 2020 code, and they're going to be revised here in the 2023. So we're going to start with 230.67, which is surge protection. Surge protection is now required for several occupancies. All right, so... A couple of videos ago, back in 215.18 for feeder circuits, I mentioned that we required surge protection uh, in the 2020 code for dwelling unit services, and that was what 230.67 said. In the 2023 code, we added feeder level surge protection, but not just for dwelling units, also for hotels and motels, dormitory units, uh, limited care facilities, um, some other things. So you're going to see the same thing happen here in Article 230. Now, it's important to remember when we talk about Article 230 that a service can only come from a utility, right? If you're not connected to a utility at all, then you would not read Article 230. If you're out in the woods and you're just running off a generator, there is no Article 230. There is no service, okay? So Article 230 is for services that come from a utility. So 230.67a, surge protection device. Surge protection device is required for all services supplying the following occupancies. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through everything in 230.67, but item one, dwelling units, was already there. You have to have a service for surge protection device for the dwelling. It has to be a type one surge protection device if it's upstream of the service disconnect, but it can be directly downstream of the service disconnect and it can be type two. Same requirements for dormitories the guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels, and patient sleeping rooms of nursing homes and limited care facilities. All right, so there you go. Fairly predictable if you watch the Article 215 video for feeders, but I'll say some of the same talking points. Um, we're not trying to protect your refrigerator. We're not trying to protect your television. And it's a bonus that we do get protection for those. Um, but we're looking for the safety components. We're wanting to protect your smoke alarms, mainly. Also, your GFCIs and your AFCIs and your home medical equipment, your CPAP machines, things of that nature. So that's the target of these changes. And we think about it with that in mind, it makes a little bit more sense why we're talking about these occupancies instead of other occupancies, right? Well, why don't we protect the office building? Well, because there's not as much sensitive stuff there. Now, well, they have a fire alarm system. Well, there might be a change in Article 6, 7, 7, 60 that we haven't talked about yet. In fact, there is. <laughs> so don't worry about it. For right now, 230.67a requires protection for these. And then just like Article 215, we have 230.67e, which gives the minimum... Uh, the minimum nominal discharge rating for surge protection devices sets it at 10,000 amps. So, again, I'll make the same talking point. Make sure you're looking at the nominal discharge rating, not the short circuit current rating. The short circuit current rating is almost always going to be higher than the nominal discharge rating. In fact, I, I don't know how you would ever have that reversed. So, short, short circuit current rating can be extraordinarily high. It's, it doesn't take a lot to create a big SS, SCCR for a surge protection device. ISA VEN, short circuit, uh, nominal discharge rating, that's what we're looking at. So this one's rated 10,000 amps, this one would comply.